it seems as the season has progressed, D'Amico is, and the, as a defensive coordinator, has kind of gotten into a rhythm of calling better games, and it seems like everything's flowing a lot better. What have you seen from him now that you've come to the end of his first season as defensive coordinator? I was actually looking at him and uh, lis or listening to him talk to us before the Texans game, and I was just thinking um, that's going to be the next head coach somewhere and uh i'm sure uh just the way he addresses the defense and the way he talks and his motivational skills and and all that stuff i saw it with sala and um i definitely wouldn't be surprised if he's maybe one, one more year with us but i'm sure somebody's going to snag him pretty soon Hey, Nick, uh, obviously a big game this week. I I'm wondering how, how much do you tap into having played in a big stakes final week of the season game in 2019? Obviously, you went to play play more that year that were big stakes games. But do you, do you think back to that at all in terms of, you know, kind of your preparation and, and locking in for a game like this? Um, no, it's not much different. Same Same preparation as the first time we played them. <clears throat> hey, Nick, uh, Fred Warner has talked <clears throat> pretty candidly this season about how, you know, maybe for the first half of the season, he felt like he was you know, putting way too much pressure on himself because of his contract extension and trying to justify it and, and prove he was worth it. Um, he said that he's kind of behind that. H have you noticed that difference and a, a transformation um, in him? Um, you know, it, I don't know how it manifests itself, but have you just noticed he's he's maybe a little more relaxed, not not as stressed out? Who are you talking about? Oh, sorry, Fred Warner. <laughs> oh, uh, didn't he sign before the season? Yeah, in July. Um, Oh, okay, I got you. Um, yeah, I think I think he kind of. We had a talk the other day. Um, he obviously has really high goals for himself, and like similar to me, and um, and obviously when you get a big payday, you you want to show the organization that they made a good decision. But he's earned that before he even played a snap this season. But. Um, yeah, I mean, he's just super hard on himself. And sometimes in football, plays aren't going to come your way all the time. And um, you just have to keep on going. And uh, eventually, when you're a really good player, it, things will start to go your way. And they have the past few weeks, for sure. Kind of in that same vein, you've been double teamed a lot. But it's you, the focus being on you has helped your defensive linemen, uh, teammates have bigger statistics and get to the quarterback does that give you a little bit of satisfaction at least that you're kind of being the sacrificial lamb at some point to let them be productive yeah definitely um i think it's a little frustrating sometimes when you don't feel as involved in in a game but uh when you see arden um get a career high in sacks and and jordan willis and and eric starting to come together and Samson I think a career high for him now as well um it's definitely rewarding in that way too Nick I know you said your preparation is the same um is it something with the younger guys and the rookies that you talk to them about about not looking at it as such a big game and keeping their preparation pretty consistent yeah I, I really don't think it's um, I think in the NFL, every game is a huge game and, um, it's not like basketball where you play a bunch of meaningless games and then you get to the playoffs and, and you have to really play your best in the NFL. Every game's huge and, um, it's really not much more pressure for us. With the production of everybody on your, in your group, getting better, what have you seen from like just your chemistry as a group? The D line. Mm -hmm. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of a lot of good stuff on tape. Uh, last week, watching Arden, um, I mean, he had as good a game as any D lineman could have in a game. He was winning one on ones left and right, and uh, not really getting blocked much. Um, and then Eric had a huge huge day as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, the more tension that goes whatever way, uh, we have really a lot of confidence in the other guys who um, are going to get those one-on-ones that they're going to win them. And um, it's definitely an important week for that to keep going. Nick, you, you mentioned you and Fred share, you know, very high goals and high, high achievers. Um, you don't seem like the type, and maybe it's just your uh, persona, but you don't seem like the type to get overly stressed out. Do you, I mean, get anxious and stressed just about, you know, foot, football in general? Definitely, yes. <laughs> I care a lot. So you seem mellow to us, I guess, publicly. How does your anxiety or, you know, obviously you care, but how, how do you deal with that or how does it, and how does it manifest itself? I'm um, definitely somebody who, who uh, keeps a lot in and doesn't, um, doesn't show much, but um, I, uh, I'm definitely getting better at, at, uh, talking to people and expressing my emotions. Nick, when you say you're getting better about um, opening up to people and talking about your emotions, has there been work that you've done around that or kind of how has that manifested itself? Um, yeah, there has, uh, especially recently, but um, it's a little personal. So I wanna keep that, but I appreciate you asking.